हेलो व्यूअर्स आई एम मिस्टर दिलीप कुमार पाल स्टेन बिफोर यू बिफोर यू विथ ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ प्लस थ्री थर्ड सेमिस्टर ऑफ द पेपर नंबर सेवन एंड द नेम ऑफ द पेपर इज परस्पेक्टिव ऑन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन एंड द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक इज इवोल्यूशन ऑफ द डिसिप्लिन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन इट मीन्स हाउ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन सब्जेक्ट हैज बीन ओरिजिनेटेड बट बिफोर आई डिस्कस हाउ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन सब्जेक्ट हैज बीन ओरिजिनेटेड आई वॉन्ट टू इन्फॉर्म माई व्यूअर्स दैट इन टू वेज यू कैन टेक बेनिफिट फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो यू कैन टेक द हेल्प ऑफ व्हाइट बोर्ड इट विल बी विजिबल टू यू और इवन इफ यू कैनॉट वॉच व्हाइट बोर्ड यू कैन लिसन मे एंड यू कैन राइट डाउन योर नोट्स सो यू विल गेट बेनिफिट इन टू वेज आई दर यू ऑब्जर्व द व्हाइट बोर्ड और यू कैन लिसन टू मी another thing i want to inform my viewers that wherever you are and wherever i am i am always for my viewers and i request my viewers to subscribe my channel so that you will get benefit and any of your friends who is reading in plus 2 first year or plus 2 second year or plus 3 first semester to fourth semester make them intimate to subscribe my channel at least some students will be benefited a little bit help to any student any person it will be a service to god let us start how international relation subject has been originated has been has come into existence international relations is a very important subject international relations is a subject which studies social economic political cultural relationship of nations but if any subject will study only the political relationship among nations it will be the international politics but international relation is a subject which studies social relationship economic relationship political relationship cultural relationship and all type of relationship of among nations it is international relations now i will discuss how international relations relations subject has been originated so far the origination of international relations inter relation subject is concerned the entire origination of international relation can be categorized into two stage two part the first part is origination of international relations from the ancient period up to past four decades of the 20th century and second part is development of international relations from past four decades of 20th century till today so we'll take up today now the first part of development of international relations that is its development from the ancient period up to past four decades of the 20th century and this period we can divide again into four parts the first part is international relations practice in the ancient period of history in the this is the uh, part one of the first period so the first part of the development of international relations from the ancient period up to past four decades of 20th century its first part is international relations practice in the ancient period in the ancient period there were small kingdoms small states and they these states had a relationship with one another they had a relationship with one another for the purpose of trade for the purpose of their security and for the purpose of protecting their interest because at that time 
these small kingdoms or small states were always in war with one another. So, at the time, states, in order to protect themselves from other states, they were establishing their relationship with other states so that they will be secure. They were forming alliances. They were forming counter alliances. So, in the ancient period, there were small kingdoms, small states, and they had a relationship with one another. It is the first stage of international relations subject. This is the first stage of the development of international relations subject. The second period is the international relations in the medieval period. In the medieval period, Roman Empire came into existence. When Roman Empire came into existence, all the small states were brought under it. So, a centralized system developed. In spite of the Roman Empire, the small states which are under it, they had a relationship with one another. And this Roman Emperor ruled for 500 years. And after the end of Roman Empire, Holy Roman Empire came into existence. After the end of Roman Empire, Holy Roman Empire came into existence. Holy Roman Empire means the Pope became the head of the Roman Empire. So at that time, there was a tussle between Pope in one hand and state on the other hand. Pope claimed that he is the head but some states declined to accept the power of the Pope. So there was a tussle between Pope in one hand and state on the other hand. Pope claimed that he is the head of the empire and some state declined. Those states supported Pope. They were treated as Catholic states and those states opposed Pope. They were treated as, they were considered as the Protestant states. So there was a tussle between Pope in one hand and state on the other hand. And Saint Augustine, Saint Thomas Aquinas, they supported the supremacy of Pope, while philosophers like Marci, Marcilio of Padua, he supported state. He opposed the power of the Pope. So, this was a time of the medieval period. Though Pope was ruling, at the time there were small states, they had relationship with one another. So, there was international relationship. At that time also, international relationship was, international relations was present. Third stage is international relations in 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th century. In this period, Reformation movement came, Renaissance came. So when Reformation in one hand and Renaissance on the other hand came, the authority of Pope was challenged. So states were divided into two states, Catholic states, Protestant states. Catholic states accepted the supremacy of the Pope. Protestant states did not accept the supremacy of the Pope. So there was a tussle between Catholic states and Protestant states. So these tussles continued for 30 years. And after, after 30 years, a treaty was signed known as Westphalia Treaty. After the signing of Westphalia Treaty, some independent states came. When independent states came, they established their relationship with one another. They established their relationship systematically by permanent diplomatic, by establishment of permanent diplomatic as a, as a embassies. So, after 1648, when independent states came, they established relationship with one another systematically. They established permanent embassies in different places. So, at that time, international relations developed in a systematic way. 
then in the fourth stage, international relations in 18th century, 19th century, up to the first four decades of the 20th century. In this period, American War of Independence took place, French Revolution took place, rule of Hitler at that time, there was rule of Hitler, defeat of Hitler, and colonialism and imperialism policy of uh, European nations in Asia, Africa, Latin America, establishment of League of Nations at the time took place. So at the time, all these incidences took place. And due to all these incidences, international relations became more systematic than before. This is all about the development of international relations from the ancient period to the past four decades of the 20th century. Now I'll discuss development of international relations, development of international relations from past four decades of 20th century till the present. In this stage, from first four decades of 20th century to till today, at the time, international relations are made in a scientific manner. In this stage, from the first four decades of 20th century to till today, international relations became more systematic than before and it was made in a scientific manner means scientific manner due to impact of behavioral revolution. So from the first four decades of 20th century to till today, international relations became more refined due to behavioral revolution at the time. So at the time international relations became more refined and international relations are made systematically on the basis of dependable data, then improved techniques. So in this period, international relations continued, but with improved techniques on the basis of reliable data and on the basis of systematic manner. So this is all about the development of international relations from the ancient period till today which we have divided into two parts but according to Kenneth W. Thompson he divided international relations from 1919 till today into four parts and in the first part is the stage one diplomatic history stage he divided the international relations from 1919 till today into four parts. The first part is diplomatic history stage. In this stage, in this stage, only history of diplomatic relations were studied without current problems. In this stage, only history of diplomatic relations were studied, not current problems. In the second stage, the current event stage, in this stage, only Current events were studied without referring to their roots. In this stage, only current events are studied without referring their roots. Means, in this stage, only current problems were studied without studying their history. Number three, law and organization. In this stage, priority is given to international law, international organization, steps to arms control, to check war, violence, inequality and tyranny. In the third stage, which is the law and organization stage, in this stage, important is given to international law, international organization, arms control to check war, inequality, tyranny and violence. And in the fourth stage, post-war stage, this stage again has four subparts. The stage 4, which is known as the post-war stage, again it has four subparts. The first is stress to formulation of theories. In this stage, priority is given to formulation of new theories so that future war can be avoided. In this stage, priority is given to development of new theories 
by which war can be avoided in the future. Second, priority to other factors rather than institution. In this in uh, in this stage, other factors are given priority than institutions. In this stage, institutions are not given priority. Besides institution, other factors are given priority. In this stage, priority is given to study real problems. In this stage, importance is not given to institution. Rather, in this stage, importance is given to the political realism, not political idealism. In this stage, priority is given to the important problems. It is, it is given priority to political realism, real things, not ideas. Number three, major concern in post-war, major concern in post-war period. In this stage, motives of all nations are studied through their foreign policies. In this stage, motives of all nations are studied through their foreign policies. Finally, behavioralism in the international politics. In this stage, the principle of behavioralism have its impact on international relations. So, in this stage, priority is given to study international relations systematically through accurate information, taking help of other subjects and improved methods. So, in this way, international relations has been developed. So, this is all about the evolution of international relations as a subject. I request my viewers to watch this video attentively, particularly plus three third semester students, because in plus three third semesters, many courses I have covered, but there are some courses which are still left and I will cover all these things so that my students will be benefited. Thank you. Goodbye to all.